Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. All right, out here today to pop some garlic in the ground. Um, had some garlic inside; it's starting to shoot. Yeah, we're in summer, but I'm better off throwing it in the ground, and see what happens, rather than just toss it in the bin. So, I'm gonna pop that out in the ground. All right, now, big thing is the pollination and cross pollination of pumpkins or squashes. Depends where you come from as to what you call them. Um, had a few questions about it, so gonna go into a bit more of a detailed explanation. All right, now all pumpkins are part of the Cuberita genius, and sorry, my Latin pronunciation really sucks. Um, so all pumpkin squashes are part of the Cuberita genius, and they go back to the family of Cuberitia. Um, all right, now they do cross-pollinate between geniuses but not always successfully uh, so generally when I'm doing a cross-pollination I'm trying to see what will happen whether it will work or not if it works great I get a plant pollinated even if I don't have a cross-pollinator if it doesn't work it doesn't work as simple as that all right so what I have in the garden is we have the uh, Cuberita Pepos, so a zucchini, um, a weeby little, and my pimply squash, they are all Pepos. Um, now the summer squashes belong to this family. Uh, the family originates out of the Cuberita atexicana, um, which is the Texas gourd. That's what it's thought to originate out of, there's no certainty in it. So they think it originated out of that. Um, it's pretty much a pretty diverse sort of species. Um, your scallop squash, your long neck squash and everything like that belongs to it. So yeah, that's a, it's a pretty sort of spread out species there. Um, so there we have the pepos. All right, next what I've got in the garden um, is the baby blues and the golden nuggets. They belong to the, to the genius Cuberetta uh, species Maxima. So they're a species that comes from South America and they tend to be more your storing type pumpkins. Um, so a winter squash or a storing type pumpkin. Um, and they'll readily cross pollinate between the species they will sometimes cross cross pollinate between the genius um, so if i've got a baby blue male flower and a golden nugget female flower i don't have a problem they will definitely take um, if i've got a golden nugget and a zucchini not necessarily gonna have a successful union there but it is a possibility so there we go all right next up we have um, the grandma and the butternut pumpkins as I call them squash as you call them in America um, which are the cuberetta machada um, uh, they are a very heat tolerant disease tolerant and pest tolerant um, they resist the uh, vine borers that you get over there in America um, they originate from central and north of South America they are the best for crossing out to any other species um, so if you've got the flowers from those ones they are the ones that's best to try and use for the for the females um, they're a relatively new sort of species um, compared to the others but we're talking thousands of years here um, so they are the most closely linked to the other ones and they are the ones that you're better off to take the male flower from those and go to one of the other ones and get a successful cross-pollination and of course if you cross-pollinate between a grammar and a butternut you're not going to have a problem now it's also got things like uh, the crook neck um, and one of my favorites which is the trombensio um, trombensio it's sometimes called a zucchini it's sometimes called a squash it is a very long if you harvest 
you know, it grows probably about three foot long. Uh, if you harvest it early, you can use it as a zucchini. If you harvest it later, you can use it as a pumpkin or as a squash. So, magnificent sort of one. I didn't have room this year with all the hanging space that that one needs. It, it generally likes to climb upwards to keep those, keep those big gourds off the ground. Um, so I didn't have room for it this year, so that's why I haven't planted it. All right, next on, next we move to the cucumbers. Um, now cucumbers come from the species cumus. Uh, they go back to the family of cubertae, so they are related to the pumpkins, as you can see by their growth habits and the fertilization and everything like that. But they're not very closely related. So your cucumbers come from the uh, cumus. Uh, cumus genius and they are the species sativus um, for all the dope smokers out there you will probably know the name sativus but yes cucumber is a cumus sativus uh, next we have our little cucumelon uh, they are again tied back to the family cubertae um, but they are of the genius melaretha and the family is uh, the species is Scabria. Uh, so again, they are they are related. All right. Now I hope that made it clearer for everyone. Um, yes, when I cross pollinate, I'm not necessarily guaranteeing that I'm going to get a pollination, but I'm giving it a shot. Yeah. You know, if I've got a male flower of one type and I don't have a matching female flower, I'm going to give it a shot. If it takes, great. If it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take but I'd rather have a go than waste the female flower. Uh, if I've got something within the same species, then I'll use that first. Uh, if I've got one on the same type of plant, then I'll use that. If I've got a grammar pumpkin and I've got a male grammar flower, I'm gonna use it. If I don't, then I'm gonna go next to something within the same species. If I haven't got something within the same species, I'm gonna go with whatever I've got and just give it a shot. If I can get some fertilization, that's a good thing. If I can't, well, I gave it a shot. All right, now, all right, that one was a pretty technical one. I'm sorry for that, but yeah, I keep getting questions about the pollination, so that's to answer some more specific questions. Hopefully you found it interesting. Hopefully uh, that will help you out with your hand pollination. Uh, I know a lot of people don't have to hand pollinate because they have the bee pollinators out there. Um, unfortunately for me, I do have to hand pollinate. We don't have the bees here in Melbourne. You know, I saw one today. Woo um, I'm surrounded by, you know, probably 50 miles of suburbs. So there's not a lot of bees sitting in the suburbs. Uh, there's not a lot of green open spaces or anything like that. That's why I get the grief I get with the birds because they see my garden, they think, oh, what a feast. Um, so it's just part of what it is um, with growing in the suburbs. All right, thank you very much everyone for watching. Sorry for the long and probably boring to some lecture. Um, but yeah, those are my tips for the day. It's how to cross pollinate and what species to use. All right, thank you very much for watching and bye for now.